B, congratulations. I think um, everybody was pretty blown away by your performance tonight. But how about you? How did you feel you performed this evening? Hey, what's up, guys? Nice to see you after fight. <clears throat> you know, like, when I talk about, uh, like, beginning of this week, when I say I can fight with Tony, and after a couple hours, if you see give me rest, I can fight with Connor. Like, people think I'm trash talking, right? Like, now I'm just finished fight with one of the best strikers in UFC today, right? I fight with, with him and stand up wrestling, like 15 minute war, but I still fresh, you know, and uh, I think now I can go, I can take one more fight, you know, I feel great, thank you guys. You know, it obviously it had been a long time for you, did you feel any rust at all, was it uncomfortable, and what was the feeling as, as the fight started out? Uh, before fight, uh, I talked with Javier Mendez. Javier said, hey, you, you have to focus on fight. You're smiling, you're relaxing. Let, let's, let's focus on fight. But I, tell, I told him, I'm focused, coach. Don't worry. I'm just, I want to enjoy with this time because last time I fight, November, one year ago, and I want a little bit enjoy. And, you know, between every fight, I improve myself. This is what I'm talking about. And when I go to the cage today, I show how I improve my striking game, my relaxing, because re relaxing is most important. When you go to the cage, you, you, have to, you have to fight, relax, you know? But you cannot be relaxed if you have like, you know, if you don't compete with high level guys, like in training, in sparring, you have to fight. You know, with high level guys, after confident is coming, you know, I feel my time is come, you know. Now I'm 29 years old. Uh, I feel great everywhere about my power, about my grappling, my wrestling, my striking. And uh, I kick a couple times Barbosa too, you know. People think he's gonna kick me. Uh, I kick him too, you know, and uh, thank you. You walked over uh, after the fight was over. You had a moment in the cage, and then you walked over to Dana White and had a brief conversation with him. Can we ask you kind of what you said and, and what he replied? Uh, after first round, I tell him, hey, Dana, you want to talk with me? <laughs> he said, yes, let's go. And I think about, let's do this one more round like this, and after I want to say to him something. And after second round, I tell him, what do you think about performance? He said, I'm sure you're going to take this. And, uh, you know, like, uh, I want to enjoy. When I go to the cage, you know, I want to enjoy. And uh, when, I, when I almost take back Edson Barboza, Mark Henry told him, hey, don't give him back. And I told Mark Henry, hey, you're right, you're right, don't give me back. You know, like, I'm a little bit talking too, you know. This is not trash talking. This is real deal, you know. And uh, I enjoy with that. And that's why I do this. And last thing for me, Habib, it sounds like you're almost more interested or, or think that the fight with Tony Ferguson makes more sense right now. But, you know, if Conor McGregor does say, hey, I'm willing to take this fight, I want to put the real title on the line, is that, does that interest you? Conor need to deserve this. <laughs> because real belt is 25 and all. This is real belt. Other all fake belts. You know, but to be honest, I think real belt have Tony Ferguson. Connor, he have only one fight in UFC, uh, 155, he, and he champion. He beat old uh, Eddie Alvarez, you know, like, <coughs> he's good fighter, but he, he's not champ. He's good fighter. I think a lot of people can beat him in 155. This is my opinion. Like, this is my opinion. I think a lot of people can beat him. And, you know, he have good boxing, good timing, but he don't have wrestling. He don't have grappling, he don't have conditioning, and, but he have real belt. Because, because not he, this is not about him, because UFC won this. And he come to lightweight and fight one time, and he's real champion. You know? but this is a little bit crazy, I think. Thank you. Hey, Habib, over here, uh, to your left, Mabruk on the win and the baby. Congratulations. Uh, you, you kept this uh, under wraps. You fought on, on the day that you became a father for the second time. 
what was that like for you to, to wake up to that news? And when did you find out that your wife had given birth? When Connor supposed to like become like father, he talked about this all year, all like, you know, like about his, like when his baby coming, all, all MMI fans waiting for him, you know. But I'm, I know uh, I have to stay busy. I have a lot of injuries and that's why I come here, stay here a couple months, living in San Jose, California stay focused training and today I become father, win, you know, like 25 and all, take bonus, you know, like today I have a very good day, I think, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Thank you. Is there a reason, I, I think uh, most people didn't even know you had a daughter. You've, you've kept this very uh, quiet that your, your, your private life, your, I don't even know a lot of people knew you were married. Why is that? <laughs> because, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to protect my family uh, from media, from uh, other like, you know, sometimes media good, but sometimes media is crazy. <laughs> and you know, like, you cannot be, you cannot be very good all the time with media. Sorry guys, but I say true, right? But I don't want like people watch on my kids, family all the time. This is my life, you know. I am tired about this. Of course, I, that's why I protect my family from media. I don't want to post like everything, oh, it's my daughter, my wife, my... I, I want to protect from this. And uh, my father know, my mother know, I have a daughter, <laughs> you know, my brother know, my, my best friends know, and, and I think my grandfather know too. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, just one more for you. Um, so this is the first time we get a chance to talk to you since you, you made the weight. Can you tell us now that it happened, how the weight cut was, and do you feel that as a result of the weight cut, you performed even better this time around? You know, guys, I never have problem with weight cut. My problem is my number one enemy is injuries because I train so hard. You know, I train so I, I'm don't I am not training like other UFC fighters. I'm training so hard. And my, my training partners know, like my close people know about this. And uh, last couple of years, I tried to change something and I think I do this very well. And I, I, I changed a lot of things, uh, but I never have problem with weight cut. You know, now I'm healthy. For this camp, I'm coming like my healthiest period ever. You know, like everywhere I'm healthy, inside, like outside in like knees, back, like everything is healthy and when I beginning this training camp I feel good, you know. And that's why I make weight. And uh, when I'm healthy I always make weight. But now I hope next year I'm gonna stay busy, stay healthy, no injuries and I wanna fight April May before Ramadan. After I wanna fight September and I wanna fight December. This is my plan. I won't fight two thousand eighteen Free time. If if not injuries coming, you know, like I hope, inshallah. Thank you. Could be right in front of you. Congratulations. Uh, first thing I wonder, did you, Mike Tyson was sitting right there? Did you talk to him uh, when you walked out of the ring, or talk to him afterward? Yeah, I I, I talked with him uh, last time when I was in uh, Vegas. Uh, I met with him inside his house. Uh, he invited me, you know. I'm a big fan, you know, like Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, and I want to be greatest like these guys, not only inside the cage, uh, outside too, you know, like champion is not like if you only, you become champion, this is not everything. You have to be greatest outside too, you know, like Muhammad Ali is perfect, for example. Like in mixed martial arts, I like watching like how people moving around, like Fedor, like George St. Pierre, like these guys. But you cannot do a lot of crazy stuff outside the cage, but even you beat everybody inside the cage. You have to be champion outside and inside. And uh, these guys, like Mike Tyson, very big motivation for me. 
to know that a guy like Tyson has accomplished so much, you describe how much a fan of his you are, but he's a fan of yours like that. Does that mean a lot to you, the fact that he's sitting ringside for you and that he has expressed to people how much of a fan of yours he is? You know, first time I watched Mike Tyson fight live, this like 2003, this, this was February, I remember this, when he fight with uh, Clifford Etienne. And he now came out first round. I watched his fight like six or five morning in the Moscow time. And, uh, you know, I was like, and I can't imagine like 2003, after 15 years, like 14 years, I'm going to fight in Vegas and I'm going to show in the last biggest event in UFC, I'm going to show best performance of the night. And uh, Tyson going to watch my fight. It's like, it's like dreams come true. And you never know what happened tomorrow. And if you want your, your dreams come true, you have to follow this. Even you have injury, surgery, like everything is come. You have to keep going, keep focus, and uh, take your dream. And just to ask you one question, er, or two questions about Edson. Number one, uh, were you surprised that he was able to come back and finish the fight? I mean, you delivered so much punishment in the first round, and he was able to finish. And number two, his kicks. I mean, even after you pummeled him like that in the first round, he came out and fired that big kick at you. You had to stay alert at all times. Did, did Were you ever a little nervous at all, you know, as you're in there trying to take him down, that he's firing those kicks, and, you know, he, he's knocked a lot of guys out with those? I think... If you go into the cage, like inside the cage with Edson and you don't worry about his kicks, I think he, he is not, you're, you're not smart fighter. Yeah. You know, always, all the time when he kicked me, like landed, like knee, like my legs, my elbow, I feel pain. <laughs> but, but I think about how, why, why I come inside the cage. Of course I know he's gonna kick me. This is not enough, he's gonna knock me out. I have to keep going, you know. When he kicked me a couple of times, I think about, oh, tomorrow I don't want to go like, I don't want to feel pain tomorrow when I go to the, back to Moscow, back to Russia. I don't want to feel pain inside, inside the plane, like 15 hours sit and think about this. And I think about this inside the cage and I think, hey, I have to change something. You know, it's, uh, I want to give him respect, big respect. I try to finish him, but he's very tough opponent, you know, and, uh, I want to give him respect, his coaches, Mark Henry, and uh, other coaches, Ricardo Almeida. I know these guys very well, and uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Edson Barboza, take this fight. Uh, he really won this fight because he understands this, this, it's going to be a big challenge for him. He want to challenge himself, and uh, thank you. Khabib, do you feel at this point that you're now too dangerous for Conor to ever fight you? I know you've been skeptical that you know he'll fight you in the first place, but does this performance clinch that fact? I think anybody can lose any time. You know, nobody protect. You know, all greatest fighters lose. You know, but my plan is when I go to the cage, I never think about oh maybe I'm gonna lose. No, I don't think about this. When I go to the cage, I think oh I I, I have to catch some somebody because I'm the eagle. This is what I'm think. And if I fight with Connor, I think uh, he have chance like about his boxing, maybe a couple minutes, I think. But what about if I'm wrestling with him all the time? Don't, 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 don't striking with him. Like protect myself, movement, change angle. Like show him take down box, show boxing, take down change level, like Ken Velasquez style. You know? But we have a lot of way. I can I can stay with the, my opponents. I can wrestling with my opponents. I can grappling with my opponents. My conditioning is better. My relaxing is good. Alhamdulillah, I feel my time is come. You know, to be honest, about Kono, I don't think, like I don't think about this guy. He have to come back. He have to defend his belt, and uh, you know, I want to enjoy with my victory tonight. Hey, Khabib. Um, congratulations um, on your victory tonight. I thought your performance was so dominant that Edson's corner should have actually considered throwing in the towel. A, do you agree with that? And B, do you think we should see more of that in sport, in MMA, in a corners trying to protect their fighters more by actually throwing in the towel? No. You cannot do this, I think. But 
this this fight is like uh, about towel like uh, I don't know but if I fight I don't want my corner put towel you know the, the, it's it's gonna be change your mind in future you know I don't know okay. and just one question um you know I know the UFC still has plans at some point in the future uh, to enter the Russian market. You say you want to be active next year, fight three times. Are you hoping that one of those fights could be in Russia? Why not? Why not? But UFC, UFC have to work hard about Russia, I think. I think they, they, they do good job around the world, but about Russia, they do nothing. It's my opinion. They have to work. I am here. They can work with me, but they don't connect with, with me about promote UFC in Russia. I promote UFC in Russia without UFC, but I'm a UFC fighter and I have to do this. But if they're going to promote this, I think they have to connect with me and we can do this together. And uh, you coming to Dagestan and you see how it's crazy friends we have like when you come last time, I think it's, it's, it's summer or September or something. Yeah, earlier in the year. And uh, we have big arena. In Russia, a lot, like St. Petersburg, Moscow, Dagestan, like everywhere. And we have very big fan base. And uh, from Dagestan, we have 15 or 16 fighters in UFC. Uh, for other republics too, you know. From Russia, we have more than 25 fighters in UFC. And they can do this, but they have to work hard a little bit. Focus on Russia. I don't know, but may maybe next fight, why, why not? Like like April, May, if they make show with me in UFC, it's gonna be great, you know, like my dream is become true, like fighting in many event, in first event in Russia, UFC, but we'll see. I am here, I am open, I am open for help UFC about promote this in Russia and and I think it's, it's gonna be a good, good idea. Thank you. Uh, could be just one for me. Um, you know, I've seen you fight in person a number of times now, but tonight in the arena, it seemed like the cheers were a little louder. Maybe the fan base is, is growing, too. And I remember this week I was struck on the Embedded episode when you had posted on your Instagram. You were out doing road work, and a fan ran from his house to take a picture with you because he just happened to live down the road, which shows your reach is really widening. Do you sense that? Are you are you close to that? Do you feel like your fan base, your the public awareness of you is is growing at this moment? I think I have very big fan base, and tonight tonight when I go to the cage, I feel my fans miss me. You know, they want I stay busy, and you know this is what I feel about about myself. Like about interesting, I think. I'm interesting from fan base because I grew up in mountain, you know, like I'm coming from nowhere. Like people need, who this guy with headgear, like nobody understand what it is. Like people interesting and he come to the, he go into the inside the cage, he smash everybody, he's 25 and all. Who this guy, world champion, like everybody talk about him. Where he from? Russia. But originally he's not from Russia, he's from Caucasus. Where from? He's Dagestan. Where he from born, you know, like he, he born from mountain, he wrestling all his life with beers, you know, like this guy is crazy, you know. People think about this. That's why I'm interesting. This is my opinion. And uh, I agree with this. And I agree. And I'm going to keep going, inshallah. I'm going to keep going, keep smash my opponents and take this belt. And my dreams, mm, Retired, undefeated, undisputed UFC lightweight champ becomes one of the greatest lightweights of all time. This is my dream, and I follow this. And that's why I think people are interesting about me. And always I give back for my friends. Sometimes they upset with me because I'm injured, but they have to understand. I'm trained so hard. For what? For make my friends happy. And uh, tonight... Tonight I'm happy, my fans happy, and thank you so much for everybody, for media, for fans, for UFC, like for Edson Barboza, my team, Ali Abdelaziz. When I come here, like like four years ago, I have injured ACL, you know, and two years ago I didn't fight. He protect me. He like he do everything like right with me. 
we do a lot of great job and now we're here you know like 25 and all this is not joke you know and i'm very happy all this thank you guys hey habib just uh just real quick two more questions for you right here congratulations uh, do you anticipate any trouble getting Tony to agree to a fight? You've said that you don't think Connor's coming back, but do you think Tony will accept a fight with you? He wants to fight Connor, is what he's been saying. I don't know about these guys. Where are these guys? When I'm injured, they talk too much, but when I'm healthy, I didn't see these guys. I want to catch somebody. You know, like Tony or Connor, doesn't matter. Or maybe they're going to fight each other, or doesn't matter. I can, maybe UFC, if UFC approve, I can fight with these guys same night. I swear, I don't joke. If you see make this, I can fight same night. I can fight with this guy same night. Yes. Why not? Now I'm fresh. I'm fighting with Edson Barboza 15 minutes. You know, and maybe I have to stay humble, you know, but tonight I have to a little bit smash these guys, give these guys back, because these guys talk too much when I'm injured. I don't want to be injured. I don't want to go to the hospital and make surgery, make rehab for months. I didn't want this, but sometimes this happens. But when somebody injured, you cannot talk about shit about this. You know, you have to stay humble. You have to stay focused on your job. But these, these guys talk about me when I'm injured now. Where are these guys? And, and that lead, my final question, and I know that you said you don't think about Connor and you don't really care about him, but if you, if you wouldn't mind answering this question, do you think when Connor sees a performance like you gave tonight, do you think do you think he wants? Do you think he looks at that as a challenge that he wants to meet, or do you think he says I don't, I don't know? Want you, that? you ask about you ask me a question about Connor. I don't know what you think he watched or didn't watch. I don't I don't know about this to be honest. Maybe, maybe he watched, maybe not. I'm not fighting for Connor. Watch my fights. I don't know. I always watch my opponents. I watch Edson Barboza last five years, you know. And always when I watch, I think about this. Oh, I have to. If I fight with this guy, I have to do this. If I fight with the other guy, I have to do this. I always watch my opponents because this is my weight, you know. I have to watch my. I have to follow my opponents, you know. Sometimes when somebody asks me, what do you think about this guy? Oh, I don't know this guy. He fight fighter weight or light heavyweight. I don't know. But he's lying, you know. If you're a professional athlete, I know all UFC fighters. I know all UFC fighters. This is not about only UFC fighters. I know all UFC guys who work here, you know. Because I'm a very big fan. I follow my dream. I'm very interested about this sport, everything. He knows this too, but he's a little bit cocky. You know? oh, I don't know when you ask him, oh, he fighter weight or lightweight. I don't, but he know this, you know, I don't want to be like him, I watch his fights, I watch all fights, other my opponents, and we'll see, 2018 is going to be big, big year for us, very big year, inshallah.